there guys, I am the C-H-A-L-L -L, and welcome back to another video. Now today, we're going to be talking about Doncaster Rovers, my beloved Doncaster Rovers, and Jason Lakilo. So of course, for those Donny fans uh, who don't know, or fans of the football league that don't know about this guy, uh, he is now a former Crystal Palace player, has been released by the club, and um, we had him on loan before uh, from January, right up until when the season was stopped uh, in March, uh, because of the pandemic. But... There were some signs from him, and now I've seen a report over the last couple of days ago that the Kilo could potentially be our first permanent signing. Now, it's not confirmed that he will sign, but there's a report that suggests we were looking at him before the release from Crystal Palace. So, potentially, we could be looking at him. Now, there has been other transfer talks surrounding the club, which I'm going to sum up in this video. Uh, so, without further ado, let's talk about Jason Lakilo. So the Doncaster Free Press are reporting that Jason Lakilo has been released by Crystal Palace, potentially paving the way for his return to the keep mode. The winger joined on loan from Palace in January, but managed only one appearance for Rovers before the season was halted due to the coronavirus pandemic. Despite his lack of game time, manager Darren Moore was very impressed by the Belgian and has previously expressed his interest in signing the Kilo on a permanent basis. And the free press understands Moore made contact with Palace earlier this month to inquire about the 21-year-old's availability. As Le Kilo has been released by Palace, the Premier League side would not be due any compensation when he signs for another club. Compensation is only due if the player rejects a contract renewal offer before joining a new club. Le Kilo arrived at Palace as a 16-year-old after switching from Belgian side Anderlecht. So that, my friends, is the report on Jason Le Kilo. Now, before I get started in explaining my thoughts about this and what I think of the signing, let's talk about, first of all, uh, the other transfer talk, like the little mini headlines, like the subheadings, if you like. Uh, so starting off then... Uh, with Ben Whiteman. Now, there is reported interest on social media from uh, potentially Hull, but the one big talking point is from Wigan. Now, obviously, there's talk about Windass as well uh, leaving the club. However, Ben Whiteman could potentially be going to Wigan. Now, obviously, I don't want to rush to any conclusions about this. This is just social media talk. Uh, but I think that it'd be sad to lose Ben Whiteman. I know a lot of fans have said, you know, if we sell Whiteman, we get a few million in, we could buy some good players. Uh, because, like I've, re I've previously said in the video recently, the Marquise money, the selling a couple of million pounds when we sold Marquise to Portsmouth, that was pretty much a um, balance the books signing, like get the funds back into the club. Now the Whiteman, if we sell Whiteman for a few million, that could potentially be a... Um, you know, a way to raise money up to sign new players this season on not just free ones, but also uh, permanent transfers with fees involved as well. So, you know, I feel like the Whiteman sale for it from a financial standpoint is great, but for the for me personally, I do not want to see Ben Whiteman go, whether it's Wigan, whether it's Hull, whether it's anywhere, I don't care. I don't want to see Whiteman leave the club. He's a brilliant defensive midfielder. I think he's got a, a large, large future at the club, and I really hope he doesn't leave this season for next season. So I really hope he stays on with the club despite all the transfer talk, and I really hope that uh, Whiteman becomes our leader and our legend, along with Coppin and a few other players as well uh, next season in League One. So, we are also linked with another uh, player as well as Lakilo, uh, and that, and basically that's the only two transfer, you know, transfers we're linked to in terms of coming into the club. Uh, so, obviously, there's links out of the club with the Whiteman stuff, and of course, you know, sadly rejecting his contract, so he'll be chased by some championship clubs. But, in terms of coming into the club, there's only two. That's the Kilo, which I'll explain more about in a bit. But also, quickly first, Accrington Stanley striker Zanzala. Now, he, I've seen the stats over the last three years when he's been at Accrington Stanley. And, you know, I know it's a replacement for Devante Cole, who, of course, you know, came in from Wigan in January uh, for six months. But, of course, he didn't sign that one-year extension that he was offered in his contract when he first signed in January for six months. Um, and to be fair, Cole has failed to score in nine appearances. So, you know, he's not a signing. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but he's not a signing I'm going to miss. But in terms of replacing him, we need a good, good-looking striker on a permanent deal. If not, a Premier League loanee again, like Ennis was 
Um, and like other players in other positions were well, like Cameron John, Ben Shaif, uh, Dieng from Championship QPR. That's going to be a one. That's going to be a sign they'll miss. But if we, if there's any chance we can get a permanent deal for a new striker, I would get it. But Zanzala, in my opinion, isn't the right option. I think he needs more time to develop and become more of an experienced striker. Not more experienced that he's, you know, 27, 28, 29, so we can only, you know, use him on a short-term basis for a couple of years or so. But, you know, give him a couple of years till he's about 23, 24, and then we can use him for a few years if he gets good. So... I think Accrington have a real opportunity here to grow a decent looking striker and I think obviously Zanzala, I think he's a former Derby County player as well so I think he came from Derby over to Accrington so you know he's come from a championship club first to Accrington to learn his trait and learn his talent uh, and I think that Doncaster could take him to the next level but again I would give it a couple of years because I think his scoring record isn't on par for what Doncaster should be looking for. Now Jason Lakilo. Now, obviously, the big connection will be the fact we're sadly are going and leaving at the end of the season, at the end of his contract. Most of you will probably think Lakila was the perfect replacement, right? Well, unfortunately, wrong. Um, Taylor, I think, will be on that left-hand side, and then Lakila will become a a easing fit on the right wing. I think we're going to play with a 4-2-3-1 next season, or a 4-3-3, depending how we uh, play next season. But I think it's between those two formations, and I think that in terms of wingers, it will be Taylor and Lakilo as your starting wingers. Um, so Lakilo, like I said, he's, he's 21. He's still got a time to develop as a person and as a player. Um, but I'm really excited to see if this comes true. Now, like I said, the only transfers that we are interested in are... Uh, Zan or reportedly interesting in are Zanzala and Lakilo. Like I said, I talked about Zanzala, but Lakilo, like I said, the difference between him and Zanzala is younger. And Lakilo, I think, is a young talent just waiting to happen. I think that Lakilo, and you know, the manager said it, he looked very impressive, even though he only made the one appearance this season. He looked very, very impressive. It's the same with Jacob Ramsey, you know, on loan from Aston Villa. We only got to see him a couple of times, but you know what? In the couple of times we've seen him, he's a good young up-and-coming talent, and I think that he'll go for millions when he gets a couple of years older. I think he'll be one of those future England talents, but if we can get him on a loan deal next season for a full season or for at least the next six months and then maybe evaluate the options then and do another six months... Um, I wouldn't be completely against that because I think Rams is a good player as well. But talking about the Kilo, if we can get him on a free transfer, I personally think in the long term that will be an absolute bargain. An absolute bargain. So comment down below what your thoughts are to this rumoured transfer. I really hope it goes through in my opinion because I think that uh, the Kilo deserves the move to a League One club that's, in my opinion, on the rise. I think Darren Moore is a former player. He managed in the Premier League with West Brom. He managed in the Championship with West Brom. So he knows the the divisions above us so I think he can get us to those stages if we keep improving in the squad and you know I've seen reports that you know our ownership is one of the most financially stable and you know people can say well Doncaster don't spend a few million here here and here and here why are they the most financial club it's because we're careful we don't you know throw money and waste money you know we're not like premier league clubs or championship clubs where we waste money on a few million for one player that might turn out to be a flop you know we're not one of those teams we're careful spenders and we spend it on the right people at the right time and if we use that process and we spend uh, we spend it at the right players at the right time and we show the world that we are a developing football club bigger players will be attracted but not for the money but for the love of playing for that team. And I hope, I really, and I've said this to a fan, you know who you are if you're watching, but I've been talking to a fan recently and I said to him, my aspirations is at least, at least one season in Premiership football. It doesn't matter what the squad is, it doesn't matter where we finish, just at least one season of having top flight football at the Keymo Stadium. Yes, we've, you know, played teams in the past from the top flight in cup games like Aston Villa, Manchester City, Arsenal a couple of times. Uh, most recent one against Arsenal was that uh, cup game uh, at the Emirates when I think it was the only goal was scored by Alexis Sanchez. But, you know, Arsenal fans saying we could hold our heads up pretty high with, you know, where we were in the league at the time. Uh, and of course, 
you know how Arsenal were performing. So you know we could took that we could take those positives and you know that game, even though it was under a different manager and we were in a completely different predicament then. I think that we showed signs that we could be a Premier League club if we play the right way, and I think with this manager and this process of youthful, like, uh, with youthful signings as well as the odd experienced signing, I think we could be a force to be reckoned with in a couple of years. So I think that we, I think our aim next season. I'll speak more about it in my Rovers predictions for next season in terms of where we finish, who we sign, and how players will do, how new signings will do. Um, I think we will be fighting for promotion. Whether it's automatic or playoffs, I'll have to see in that video when I make my predictions about next season. But I think we will be a force to be reckoned with. And I think that Lakila will be the first major step. Uh, maybe Zanzala is a good backup signing, but I think Lakila was the first major step. And keeping Whiteman, of course. Uh, so thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And for now, guys, I'm the C H A L L. Goodbye. Oh,